the Italian city of Florence is widely regarded as the birthplace of the Renaissance, the period from the 14th to the 17th century, when Europe emerged from the doldrums of the medieval era into a period of unparalleled progress in the fields of art, science, and literature. But could the epicenter of the European culture have also been a hotspot for UFO visitation? And did some of history's most talented painters capture them in their works? Any tourist visiting the historical city of Florence could be forgiven for feeling overwhelmed at the sheer riches of artworks and treasures contained in its museums and art galleries. But after viewing the more famous paintings and statues on offer, the weary day-tripper may find themselves face to face with what some people consider conclusive proof that unidentified flying objects have been among us for as far back as the Renaissance. So just what is it that has these alien enthusiasts so excited? The painting in question is the Virgin Mary and St. Giovanna, which can be found in the Hercules room of the Palazzo Vecchio. Due to its growing reputation amongst ufologists, the picture is also affectionately known locally as Madonna del UFO or Our Lady of the Flying Saucer. It was painted in the 15th century and has been attributed to multiple artists. The painting depicts the Virgin Mary with the infant Christ and St. John the Baptist. St. John is, in fact, the patron saint of Florence, so this may have something to do with how the painting was commissioned. But it's not the central figures of the work that have created so much interest, but rather a small spot in the sky above the Virgin Mary's shoulder. For on closer inspection, it appears to be a domed metal craft emitting beams of light, similar to that of the archetypal flying saucer. Furthermore, on the ground below is a man staring incredulously at the object, as his dog barks at it whilst the three central figures remain oblivious to its existence. And this is not the only 15th century piece of Italian artwork to raise interest from ufologists. Painted at a similar time to the Madonna and Child is an altarpiece, entitled The Annunciation with St. Amidius, now housed in the National Gallery at London. The painting depicts the impregnation of the Virgin Mary with the Holy Spirit, but again, what has piqued the interest of observers is not the Madonna, nor the angels surrounding her, but rather an oval-shaped entity depicted in the sky above Mary, with a yellow beam of light being emitted from it. It cannot be argued that in both the artworks the airborne shapes look remarkably similar to that of the flying saucer, and the fact that both appear to be emitting beams of light adds weight to the idea that these paintings are the depictions of 15th century alien visitations. Of course, art historians dispute this interpretation of the images, they assert that the shape is, in actual fact, an artistic impression of a cloud of luminescence, and the lights being produced by the cloud are a herald of angels signaling the coming of the Messiah. But there is yet another painting housed in Florence that has intrigued alien enthusiasts. Painted sometime in the 1600s, the glorification of the Eucharist has in recent years become known as the Sputnik of Montalcino. This is because, at first glance, the painting would appear to depict the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1. The content of the artwork, originally commissioned by the Church of San Pietro in Montalcino, the object in question is believed by art historians to be a celestial sphere. However, not everyone agrees with this analysis, and some think a mystery lies at the heart of these peculiar objects found in paintings throughout history. A celestial sphere, also known as a creation globe, is an early artistic representation of the cosmos. Earth lies at the center and spherical layers containing the other planets, the stars, the moon, and the sun surround it. Many paintings throughout history have depicted these spheres, which are typically grayish or dark in color. Whilst the sun and moon are clearly represented within the sphere of the glorification of the Eucharist, critics point out the lack of stars and its metallic reflection are more similar to images of an early man-made satellite. They also note the strangeness of the antenna, which are more commonly explained to be symbolic wands held by Jesus and the Heavenly Father. Instead, theorists note that they also seem to have a retractable telescope design. Again, as there is no consensus on the ambiguous images within these artworks, the debates about the contents of the painting are likely to rage for decades to come. But it would appear that Florence is no stranger to UFO encounters and unlike the artworks, a more recent UFO sighting produced numerous eyewitnesses who are more than happy to share their stories of what they saw that day. It was October 27, 1954, a typically crisp autumn afternoon in Tuscany. The mighty Fiorentina club was playing against its local rival, Pistolese. 10,000 fans were watching in the concrete bowl of the Stadio Artemi Franchi, but just after halftime the stadium fell eerily quiet before a roar suddenly erupted from the crowd. The players, baffled by this reaction, turned to the spectators to see that they were no longer watching the match, but rather looking up at the sky fingers pointing and mouths open in shock. One of the footballers on the pitch that day was Ardico Magnini, 
something of a legend at the club having played for Italy at the 1954 World Cup. He recounted seeing something that looked like an egg that was moving slowly across the sky. Everyone was looking up and also there was some glitter coming down from the oval-shaped vessel. Another witness was a football fan, Gigi Boni, who remembered clearly seeing this incredible sight. However, unlike Magnini, Gigi Boni described seeing multiple cigar-shaped objects moving very fast before suddenly stopping. Boni has spent many years reliving that day in his mind, and he asserts that what he saw was extraterrestrial. That's what I believe and there's no other explanation I can give myself. Despite skepticism about what was observed that day, there were numerous UFO sightings in many towns across Tuscany that day and over the days that followed, including reports from as far away as Venice. According to some eyewitness accounts, a ray of white light was seen in the sky coming from Prato, north of Florence. Another man eager to speak about that day is Roberto Pinotti, the president of Italy's National UFO Center. He has written several books about UFOs and his home in the center of Florence is stuffed full of alien memorabilia. The players and public were stunned seeing these objects above the stadium, Pinotti says. Having witnessed them, he remains convinced that what he saw that day was an intelligent phenomenon, a technological phenomenon and a phenomenon that cannot be linked with anything we know on Earth. What intrigues Pinotti further is what these cigar-shaped vessels appeared to be emitting, repeatedly described as a sticky white string-like substance, which he called angel hair. He continued to explain that as a 10-year-old boy he witnessed this phenomenon himself. I remember, in broad daylight, seeing the roofs of the houses in Florence covered in this white substance for one hour and, like snow, it just evaporated. Variously described by witnesses as similar to cotton wool or cobwebs, the substance was hard to collect because it disintegrated on contact. But some people were determined to find out what it was. One such person was journalist Giorgio Battini. In 2003, he told an Italian television program, Voyager, how on that day he received hundreds of phone calls about the sightings. Venturing out to investigate, Battini came across a wood outside the city that was covered in the white substance. He gathered several samples and took them to the Institute of Chemical Analysis at the University of Florence. The lab subjected the material to spectrographic analysis and concluded that it contained elements of boron, silicon, calcium, and magnesium, and that it was not radioactive. Unfortunately, this did not provide any conclusive answers, and the material was destroyed in the process. As a result, the question about remains. Could this substance have been a byproduct of extraterrestrial visitation? Naysayers continue to dismiss the whole UFO phenomenon as nothing but a myth, magic, and superstition, wrapped up in this idea that somehow aliens are coming either to save us or destroy us, when more rational and plausible explanations exist. However, one counterproposal offered by astronomer James Magaha to explain the white angel hair substance sounds almost as bizarre as the alien theory. He asserts that when he first looked at the case, he thought that what he had seen in the sky that day was likely to be a fireball, a very bright meteor breaking up in the atmosphere as they can be cigar-shaped with pieces breaking off. But Magaha said it became fairly apparent that this apparent UFO sighting was not evidence of beings from outer space, but was actually caused by young spiders spinning very, very thin webs. He explains that these spiders use these webs as sails and they link together to create a huge globe of webbing in the sky, which the spiders ride on to move between locations. They just fly in the wind and these things have been recorded at 14,000 feet above the ground. So, when the sunlight glistens off this, all kinds of visual effects are created. As the webbing breaks off and falls towards the ground, it creates the illusion of snow before it quickly disintegrates. This theory is backed up by the fact that September and October are the months when spiders in the northern hemisphere migrate, and spectacular spider migrations still make headlines today. But it hasn't convinced everyone. Magaha's spider theory has been questioned because of the chemical analysis of the angel hair samples retrieved that day. Spider silk is a protein, an organic compound containing nitrogen, calcium, hydrogen, and oxygen. Not the elements reportedly found in the samples Bettini and the others brought to the university laboratory, shortly after it was seen falling to the floor. Magnesium and calcium are fairly common elements in living bodies, boron and silicon much less so. But if these were the main elements the white fluff contained, it doesn't sound to me as though they'd come from spiders, he says. Sixty years on, the chances of determining the cause of the incident remain slim, and so it remains an ongoing mystery. No matter what the scientists say, those who were there that day are convinced that what they saw was unlike anything on Earth. 
From the artwork of the 15th century to eyewitness testimony of the 1950s, it appears that Florence was a hotspot of extraterrestrial activity. But then, as the 1960s approached, it seemed that the alien visitors had lost interest in the Tuscan capital. Apart from a couple of possible sightings in the 1970s, UFO activity in the area appeared to have grown cold. And so it remained that way until 2017, when authorities revealed that the preceding 12 months had seen more reports of UFO sightings than at any time since the incident at the football match over 60 years previous. Is it possible that the same visitors who were caught in the artworks of the 15th century and later observed by football crowds of the 1950s have finally returned to the region once more? Thank you for watching Matrix Wisdom, the official YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Get notified of our daily video releases by hitting the bell icon next to the subscribe button.